this one's been rolling around the internet space the last couple of days, and I thought it was finally time to dive in because Pete Hines from over at Bethesda has some really cool things to say about their game, about uh, Starfield and the fact that he's already been putting in tons of time and a bunch of other stuff. This is about a 13-minute long video. We're going to go in. We're going to do uh, some discussion around the topics that they discuss in this video. We're going to be here a little bit, and if you're one of those anti-Bethesda trolls who's like, I don't want to play Bethesda's new title because Bethesda sucks and I think Starfield's going to suck. There's the door. Don't let it hit your empty behind on the way out because the rest of us are here to have fun. And my premium edition is prepped and loaded on my Xbox Series X. For Thursday night, I will be streaming all weekend, and I hope you're along for the ride. In the meantime, let's dive into this interview here. Um, I've been seeing TikTok clips of all sorts of fun stuff cropping up from here. Mostly, I think, related to him spending like 80 hours playing through like faction content before he ever even got to like the main story of the game. But also the um, side quests and just some of the random stuff that gets thrown at you, which takes you off into different places of the world to explore. Uh, it's a really cool interview. Um, I've seen bits and pieces of it again on TikTok, but I haven't actually sat down to do the long form video yet. But that's what we're doing today. So without further ado, let's kick this bad boy off. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want more. Uh, check out the Discord, links are down below. Yeah, lots of playlists, daily streams at 11 a.m. At Gamescom, I sat down with Bethesda's very own Pete Hines to give us the lowdown on this year's biggest game. It must feel good to be back at Gamescom as well. Uh, it is. This is a show I've, I've been to very a lot of times and uh, over the years, and it's always a great crowd. It's, it's honestly, it's amazing to like bump into fans I recognize oh, yeah. to see folks. Um, and honestly, to be back in person, you know, it's something we haven't gotten to do a whole lot of. And... Uh, you know, as, as Todd was just saying, you can really feel the energy from the fans, how excited they are, how much they're looking forward to it. It, it Honestly, it, it makes it a lot of fun. Which, by the way, I will say that um, a lot of people have been commenting on how Pete seems extremely enthusiastic and excited about this game. And I know that it's the front men's, both, you know, all these guys who are the front men for the show. It's their job to be excited about the game. But you also have to think about when you've been working on something for six, eight years and maybe dreaming about it for longer, it feels good good when you get it out the door if you've never completed something creative in your life i'm so sorry for you because that sucks because i've had the blessing to publish a variety of books i've pushed out a couple of video games i've been able to have over 20 million uh words put out into the internet and print space over the past 15 plus years and it is an incredibly rewarding feeling when you finish a project whether it's painting writing music video games whatever um, when you actually get to the end of something you're excited about it doesn't matter what it is and it also doesn't matter what the critics are saying if you're happy with it and you're excited about it and you're like oh it's finally out and people can finally check it out that's a very good feeling and i think it shows in this interview yeah it's just it's a really special place for that i think but so many of the fans that are here today and watching from home are just kind of waited with baiting breath for what's to come for Starfield, but these last few days ahead of launch, what do they tend to look for, look like for the, you and for the rest of the team? Stress. Um, <laughs> I'd say that uh, It's in some ways, it's probably the most difficult part of a campaign uh, because number one, like you know how close it is. Number mm. two, the amount of work that our teams right now, uh, and, and shout out to all of those folks who, who are number one crushing it, doing an amazing job oh, yeah. with, the, with the trailer at ONL last night and, and everything that's been a part of this campaign. They, they are working so hard. Um, and you're also just sitting here where you've now given the game to a bunch of people to press the influencers yeah. and you don't really know what they think or how they're feeling. And so we, it's a little bit helpless. So we try and focus on the things that we can control. And it, most of all, we're just so excited for next week and to get this into people's hands. This is a very important moment. I think, um, again, going back to if you've ever worked in a creative project before, um, it's the calm before the storm. You don't know how it's going to be um, responded to, and all you can do is is hope that people respond well to it. Um, I think at the end of the day, no one sets out to make a bad game, just like no one sets out to make a bad film or a bad TV show or write a bad book. Everyone who creates something is doing so because they have a drive within themselves to make something and to put that thing out there in front of other people. And they're doing that because they want other people to feel the same joy that they feel within them. And I think it's very disingenuous of people who immediately make comments about how they're just doing this because they're trying to make money and they're trying to scam me and meh, 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 meh. everybody out there who puts something out into the public eye 
is out there doing it because they want other people to consume that piece of content. Generally speaking, if you're putting something in front of the public, it's because you want other people to see it, feel it, touch it, hear it, taste it, and also, yes, pay for it. Because if you didn't care about hearing feedback from other people, and if you didn't care about making money for it, you would never release it to the public in the first place. So there are a lot of talented people who have worked on this, and I think that that's something that should never be discredited, uh, whether or not um, there's corporate shenanigans that may or may not influence someone's decision about whether or not they're going to buy a product. It doesn't take away from the hard work that people have put in to make a really fun and good game. I mean, I personally kind of love that confidence of being able to hand it off to press and, and reviewers and you know influencers fairly early for yeah. what most games marketing tends to do like to me that speaks like we love what we've done with this game it's now time for you guys to to really have a go with it yeah and and if i'm being honest like there really <laughs> there's really not a amount of time that i'm comfortable enough of like now you've played enough mm. starfield to get what this game is because yeah. like i'm at 150, 160 hours on my current playthrough, and like, oh. yeah, I haven't even come close to do. Like, there is so much stuff I have intentionally not done. This, um, this is what I'm talking about. Like, we t we try and tell everybody how big this game is, mm. and the folks that are playing it, like, one of the few things they will tell us is, yeah, you weren't kidding. How big? Like, I can't <laughs> believe how big it is. Like, yeah, it's content and explore it. Like, no matter how you want to play, there is so much for you to do in this game. You mentioned opening night live, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but I just kind of want to know why it was so important to bring the experience of Starfield that you have to this audience right here at Gamescom. I mean, for, for one thing, like, we, our games have always done really well in Germany. It's, it's obviously, you know, it's a, a really well-known PC market, and we obviously came from being, a, you know, an indie PC developer and publisher. Also, guys, the European Union makes up a lot of different countries, and there's a lot of different gamers over there. So uh, that's a very simple answer. It's just because it's a big gaming market, and they wouldn't be there if it wasn't important to their demographics and sales. That's exactly why they're there. Before we were anything else. Um, but this audience and, and role-playing games and what, what they mean in Germany, it's a very popular genre. And, you know, across Elder Scrolls and, and Fallout, um, Bethesda Game Studios has got a really big um, following in this mm. territory and, and for all the folks who come to Cologne who, who aren't in Germany. Uh, and we just felt like this close to launch to try and do something special for them, uh, you know, to sort of surprise and delight and to just be here and, and to, you know, take pictures or have a conversation yeah. or whatever. Are fun, um, everybody. You know, we, we want to make sure that they they feel as special as, as they are to us. It's cool for me to see that you've got that glass cabinet full of all the different Starfield paraphernalia. We got the Series X console wrap, we got the Constellation Edition watch, and that helps me feel at least like we're so tangible. It's like, it's right there. I can even like grab it. We're so close to launch. Plus it's really good like shopping for birthdays. Oh yeah. Oh, I want that, I need that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, like... By the way, everybody, should I put up an Amazon wish list? Um, I would love the Xbox controller and headset, but it just didn't make sense to me because the vast majority of content creation that I do is not just Starfield. Um, I do a ton of different things, and um, over the years, like I don't know how that headset works in terms of audio quality and stuff for the microphone, so I just didn't do it. Um, plus, I already have a perfectly functioning Xbox Series X controller. Um, however, however, I will say that... Um, now that they've announced that uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is coming to the Xbox uh, later this year, uh, Christina has expressed interest in playing co-op with me. And so now I'm thinking oh, that might be on the cards, getting uh, that controller and headset. I'm assuming they're still available. I don't even know if they still are. But paraphernalia and swag has always been a cool thing for collectors and people who really want to have something tangible in their hands. I've got the watch on already. Yeah. I'm jealous, uh, trust the, me. The, the, love the cool watch. watch. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're really excited both for like how good the game is, but the way in which <laughs> Xbox has supported us with, you know, console wraps and like the controller and the headset oh, is the beautiful. best piece of hardware. I Like they are so good. I, I use them nonstop, yep. uh, all, full credit to that team. But uh, across Xbox, the, the, the way that they have stepped up and supported and amplified Starfield in, in every way possible has been just awesome to be a part of. We're so pleased for all of the support that, that, that they've given yeah. us. You're just helping me dress my entire house and start feeling <laughs> stuff at this point, so you know, I'm, I'm happy enough as it is. Yeah, but absolutely. We did get to see quite a lot of Starfield. You had a new trailer last night yep. at Opening Night Live. Todd came on stage to chat a bit more about what that opening sequence looks like, what players can expect, but 
Why don't you catch up us, uh, catch us up more on the news of the day, really, for Starfield? Yeah, uh, I mean, first of all, I want to say, you know, I am, I am a few weeks away, whatever the number is, six or seven, from 24 <laughs> years at this company. Wow. That is the best trailer we've ever made, and and I, I will have words with anybody who says otherwise. It is my favorite thing. I had absolutely nothing to do with that trailer. Yeah. Full disclosure, that is that is my team. That is Aaron Losey's <laughs> team going out and making that happen, and. Um, the, your flowers, the, guys. the tone <laughs> that it hits, the way that it hits that feel of not just what it's like to play the game, it but was sort of trailer. the hopefulness, the, the lifting others up. I, I just, I think it's brilliant. Um, mm. But, you know, it, it's not just that. It's, hey, we, we've got wraps for your Xbox console. You know, something Xbox has never offered yeah. um, that look really great. Um, uh, you know, we've released a bunch of new wallpapers, that, uh, desktop wallpapers and phone wallpapers that have been made. Like, it's... We are now in the point, I, I said last night to the folks uh, at, after dinner, like, there is no emergency break anymore on this nope. launch, folks. Like, we're a go whether we're ready or not. <laughs> so everybody, like, make sure your seatbelt is fastened because this is happening and it's, you know, there are very few chances. Todd and I try and reinforce this to, to our respective teams as much as we can. You don't, you don't get many opportunities at, at a game like this. Um, ga uh, games of any kind, you know, is a mm. finite number for a, anybody in development or publishing. But for something like this, for as special as it is, for as long as I've been here and to see what these different launches are, you can tell when something special is happening. Mm. And I think Starfield is that. And, you know, I really uh, have tried to emphasize to, to our teams, like, amidst all of the hard work, like, please find time to enjoy this. Because you never yeah. know when you get another chance to be a part of something as special as He's got a good point, too, especially because he's been in publishing now for 24 years with Bethesda specifically. Um, you know, as a, as a consumer myself, I can point to a handful of titles that sort of rise through to the top, you know, who kind of float up. I can think of like Red Dead Redemption 2, Dragon Age Origins, Baldur's Gate 2, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Deadfire, um, you know, Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor are really good. They're, they're, you know, Knights of the Old Republic. You know, there are you know 10 maybe tw you know maybe 15 games i can think of that really define like peak moments in my gaming history as a consumer and as a consumer i'm consuming way more than a single company can ever produce so when you look at it from the perspective of a game publisher and designer you're only getting so many chances up to bat and so you need to be able to maximize your home run average you know if you can and and when you get something that works savor that moment as much as you can because you don't know when it's going to come around again that's very good advice uh from from someone talking about the stewardship that you and todd have over this team to bring something like starfield to players out there and it often gets described as oh it's an open world game but that feels like a bit of a disservice because it's not just the one world it's thousands that we can explore and just sprawling open world experience across like a real good portion of the galaxy i mean what is it like to actually have to lead a team on such such an endeavor as that where it's grand scale that we've seen and all the detail as well yeah i mean you know as you as you all have seen as you've watched how we've talked about starfield it it really required us to push ourselves in terms of how do you get the rest of the world to wrap its head around a game of this size and scope. I mean, it is literally, it feels when you're playing it almost like there are a bunch of different games mm. inside of one game and I get to decide how much time I want to spend in a way that you haven't really seen in a Fallout or Skyrim. I mean, those things are still, you know, oh, I can spend all my time just picking flowers and the Elder yeah. Scrolls. Like, yes, you can, but it doesn't feel as, as wholly different as like, the entire space game that exists, mm. the entire live on a planet, just like the freeform exploration, the combat, the which factions taking sides, the player, it's um, its just amazing to see it all, how it all comes together, but explaining that to folks in a way that is digestible, um, you know, it's how, how you end up with something like Starfield Direct, which, I mean, it's basically a feature film that yeah. we created <laughs> just to explain to folks and to talk to folks about not just explain what the game is, but do it in a way that I just thought was really authentic and hearing from the people making it, how they think about mm. both creating it, how they think about playing it, and, and seeing the way that that resonated with players, I think was really, was really special. 
By the way, um, I did not really get on the Starfield bandwagon until Starfield Direct earlier this year. That was the 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 watershed moment for me. I had peripherally known that Bethesda was making a space RPG, and I had always kind of said, "Okay, yeah, when it comes around, I'll take a look." And then when Starfield Direct happened, you know, I was watching the game showcase mostly to watch all the games that were coming, um, and then. Part of that was it was, you know, culminating in Starfield Direct. And then I saw that whatever it was, 45 minutes or whatever it was of that Starfield Direct. And I went, holy crap. Uh, and I immediately went to Chris and said, hey, this is coming to Game Pass, which I have. Um, but do you think, you know, you would be OK if I spent 100 bucks to get the premium edition so I could get Head Start access to actually make content around this game and actually introduce it into my you know, schedule on, you know, with, along with all the other things I'm doing. And, and she was like, that sounds great to me. And so I went forward and I started really going whole hog into all the cool things that I saw about it. Cause you know, I'm not a huge, I I've, I've played all the elder scrolls games since Morrowind. I didn't play anything before Morrowind. I started with Morrowind and I've never gone back and played the other ones cause they're too old. and The graphics are too clunky. Um, but I played everything since Morrowind and I've played most of the fallout games and all the fallout games. I played fallout three, um, and then fallout 76 and a little bit of fallout four, but I've never done new Vegas. Um, and, um, I'm familiar with Bethesda games, and I have fun playing Bethesda games, but I've never been like, I'm not a Bethesda fanboy, I don't like follow everything they, they know or do, but Starfield Direct was the game that made me go, oh, hello, um, you know, Bethesda, what are you doing, what are you building here, this looks really, 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 really good, and... Um, uh, that feature film they put together, you know, explaining all of the different things that they had going on was but was what made me go, oh, this is going to give me a year, if not two years of content that I can create on my channel because there's going to be all of the different playthroughs you can do for each of the factions. That's tons of content for the channel. Then there's all the spaceship building. That's content for the channel. Then there's, oh, I could be a space pirate and like, you know, take other ships from people and not other people but other other you know npcs i can i can be a space pirate i could be a smuggler and buy like smuggler um what do they call it the the consoles that you can like add onto your ship modules is what they're calling them i can install like contraband modules and be like a smuggler and then it was like oh well then i'm totally playing like you know uh captain you know captain reynolds uh han solo you know i'm gonna be a smuggler in space with my crew like that immediately resonated with me and then there's the outpost building and the planet exploration and and all of the other like just i'm on board man i'm on board one thing that really grabs me i think is the love that's being poured into like radiant quest systems and just allowing those new and unique experiences for people to have no matter where they are in the galaxy, whether they are just flying around in space, whether they are out there just maybe mining some rocks or mm -hmm. looking at new fauna, Look at that. flora, Look at that. It's, it's a really cool way to wait. involve them in new stories that yeah. they perhaps weren't searching for, but now they're being like collided into, and it's just juicy. Right. You want, well, you want it, to dive, and dive then, in. And then, because we made an irresponsibly large game, <laughs> we take it to another level that that I think, and this is one of the things I'm, I'm looking for, we've seen it ourselves. Like, I was just talking to a couple of folks from our Benelux office who were like, you know, they've both played, you know, about the same amount of time, like, you know, 40 hours or 60 hours, but their experiences were like, we didn't do any of the same things at all, like, not even close, and just be with that and then the whole like locations aren't the same for every person like what you yeah, and I find definitely. going to explore this planet I can't just tell you you should go here and land here and find this like yeah that might not be there for you like this is important because the procedurally generated stuff means that it's going to be impossible to create wikis around. So um, your experience on planet Blubberon might be completely different than my experience on planet Blubberon because where I land is going to be different where you land. And the generation that happens after you land where you've got that, you know, 45 minutes or so of explorable space around where you landed... Um, that's pretty unique and pretty cool, and I gotta say, it sounds really exciting to me to be able to know that I can have my own unique experience going off and doing something completely different. And of course, yeah, you do have some of the set things that are like the storylines that are gonna be the same no matter what you do. You know, you're always gonna have the same NPCs telling you to do this, that, or the other. But that still creates like I'm gonna start the game and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna play uh, the you know constellation storyline, and somebody else is gonna go over here and do a different storyline. Someone else is gonna pick a different faction and 
and go there and someone else is going to want to go over here. And like we could all start the game at the exact same time and go in 5, 10, 15 different directions and have completely different experiences during our 40 to 50 hours, the first 40 to 50 hours of the game. That's something that's really cool. And I think as much fun as I'm having in Baldur's Gate 3, that's something that even Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't do because it is... Quick commercial Even break, everyone, to give a shout out to all of these amazing people who are the guild champions at the highest tiered membership here on our channel. And of course, all of the members who help keep me full time and doing this for your enjoyment. If you would also like to become a member, you get access to tons of special stuff like live stream, member only chat, private videos for our members several times a week. Uh, it's really simple. Just pick your tier, go from there. You can also do super chats or super thanks on any stream, YouTube short or video that you see. Don't forget the Discord. Links are down below. Let's get back to the video. Is, even though it has 17,000 permutations and everything else, it still is a more linear experience from point A to point B, if that makes sense. Like you get to find and have an experience that truly feels like, like your own in a way that, that I think folks are going to really enjoy and appreciate. Yeah, I mean, we got a little bite of that in the Starfield Direct, like you mentioned. I mean, Jamie Mallory literally coming out and saying, oh, well, hold my sandwich. I'm, I'm grabbing them all here. And it's just it does speak to that Sandwiches, unique way man. that every player can tackle whatever situation they do come across or even just back down to character creation and that's that jumping off point of deciding here's what i'm going to start off as i have no idea where that journey is going to take me and how it might change me as a player me as a character in this game and it's all really fascinating but what are the sorts of way that you tend to play it? i mean i know you've you've poured in some time now but well uh, look when i'm when we're in this phase and like leading up i i don't I don't play like I would like I don't play like I'm about to when I get right. back home where like okay now I'm yeah. gonna start like like this is yeah. Pete's you, you character. got a job to do right yeah now. <laughs> up to this point it's been Bethesda's character and yeah. sort of the way I've approached it is sort of testing I mean I've been doing this for a long time I've been interacting with our players playing Bethesda game studio stuff for a long time so we know mm. how they think and I, I talked to Jamie after E3 and she's like I, I don't get this like why is this such a thing and I said Jamie what you did is you tapped into the like the silliness factor yeah. that like you sort of tend to forget like you talk about Starfield and yeah but it's still fun mm. like it's supposed to be about fun and you put your finger sort of right on the pulse of the kind of nonsense that our players love to get up to because we make a game that is about freedom right like yeah. we embrace chaos we give players more freedom than I think in a game like this than people really dare to in their games like that's part of what makes Starfield special and look that creates situations that we have to do a lot of work to make sure like this doesn't break this doesn't create problems but the the payoff for that and like what players are allowed to do like wait I can do this like I can spend all my time doing something as ridiculous as this yeah so he just touched on something that I think is very, very important to the overall conversation about Starfield. Because in, uh, I think yesterday or maybe it was this morning, I came across a video where, you know, you had somebody talking about how people are, there's some people out there who are complaining that when you land on a planet, you're only getting like 45 minutes of explorable space. Like you can sit up from your ship and start running and it's about 45 minutes in, in any direction where you hit the wall of like, you can't go any further. And some people are like, but this needs to, it's supposed to be No Man's Sky. It's supposed to be an infinite, dim and dim and dim, but even though Bethesda never promised that. What they're talking about here is the complexity of creating what they've done, which is you know, No Man's Sky doesn't have complex storylines and quest lines and faction systems and all the things that Bethesda is known for in terms of their games. And in order to make sure all of this works, you have to have some boundaries in place. Even though you are going to try to make something that's incredibly big, you have to have some limitations in place. Otherwise, the game's not just going to be 125 gigs on your system. It's going to be this sprawling behemoth that will never endingly get bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes on. Like, that's if that's what you want the game to be about, that's what you should do. But we want you to go and push and try all of the different ways because it's really not about, like, our story or how we want you to play. It's about how you want to play. So when I play, I spend time, like, I'm going to spend a week and not land on a planet. Like, what's it like to just be in outer space, spend all my time in outer space, landing on star stations, derelict ships, doing all this stuff? And then I'll be like, okay, now I'm gonna go land in this city and I wanna see how long I can spend not leaving this city. Like how many factions can I find? How many quests can I do? And I'll get to decision points where it's like, look, you're about to like, you have to pick a side here yeah. the, and I'll make a save and like, I'm gonna play this yep. way and I'm gonna go two, do two hours down the road just to see like, how does that feel? And then yeah. rewind and play it two hours the other direction just cause I like, I wanna know like, what should our players expect? 
How does this, and just trying to do that in as many ways as possible. Re just land on a random planet and just start walking. Like, what's this like? How fun is this? Uh, and the more of it you do, the more you find like there is, there's a thousand hours in this version of the game alone. Like if you don't My even gosh. touch it, it it's, it's crazy. And like my one piece of advice to folks is do not ignore your activities. Like yeah. that's almost, okay. it feels like throwaway stuff that the game is giving you. Like, this is the clip I saw There is some earlier. amazing stuff in there that doesn't even feel like a real quest, but like will take you to some amazing places and amazing stories. We encourage you to play this like any BGS game, which is like do what you want, go where you want, test the game, you know, be the kind of player, the kind of person you want to be in this world and see what happens. And save frequently because, like he just said, the whole, you know, going two, dire two hours in one direction to see if you like that or going, you know, then rewinding and going two hours in this direction to see if you're going to want to do this instead. I think that's, you know, what a lot of us do, um, even in Baldur's Gate 3, the idea of save scumming. For some people, it's not, a, you know, they don't like to do it, but uh, other people do sort of like, I'm going to make a hard save here. Let's walk this direction for 30 minutes and see, is this is this where I want to do or maybe I'd. Maybe I get 30 minutes here, and I'm like, ah, I don't really like where that's going. I want to go over here instead. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. I, just, I get chills thinking about what I'm going to get up It's going to be a lot. We cannot wait to see all the <laughs> stories and how people choose to, to express themselves in this game. It's going to be amazing. i got one more question I just have to ask you. Okay. I know you're a fan, but are Arsenal going to win the league? Yes. You heard it here. Thanks again, Pete. Gotta Remember, though, you guys can play Starfield day and day on Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass starting September 6th. But or if you're like me and you have early access, we'll be starting on August 31st at 5 p.m. Central Time, which is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Thursday night is just around the corner. I'm recording this on Monday. I think this is going to be coming out Tuesday morning. I am so excited for this game. Um, if you're excited to join me for the adventure, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams at 11 a.m. I'm going to be breaking that cycle for Thursday night because we're going to be starting the stream at 5 p.m. Uh, I think might have said Central earlier. What I meant was 5, 5 p.m. Pacific on Thursday night, August 31st. I will be streaming for a few hours that night and then creating some content into the wee hours of the morning and then taking a few hours of sleep and getting back up and getting back at it the morning of the first. Don't forget to join the Discord. Links are down below. Until next time, everybody, stay safe and happy gaming.